statistics department. Now I'm going to explain fourth unit for third semester students, which is large sample test and small sample tests. Let us learn some basic concepts. What is large sample? If the sample size is greater than or equal to 30, then we consider that the sample is large. And the role of normal distribution in large sample? We know that almost all distributions like binomial, poison, negative binomial, exponential for large values of n tends to normal distribution and its areas property of standard normal distribution is used to test the given hypothesis as x follows normal distribution with mean mu and variance sigma square then z equals to x minus mu by sigma which is also follows standard normal distribution. Usually z equals to x minus, we can write mu as expectation of x and sigma as square root of variance of x. We have test procedure, we have mainly 5 steps, null hypothesis. So formulate the, given, formulate the null hypothesis which is suitable for the problem and alternative hypothesis which, uh, which is alternate to the null hypothesis and LOS fix the level of significance and test statistics as z equals to t minus expectation of t divided by standard error of t which follows norm, standard normal distribution. Here t is called statistic and the last step involves comparison and conclusion. Compare the calculated value of z with the tabular value of z at, at appropriate level of, level of significance. If the calculated value of z is less than the tabular value of z, then accept null hypothesis or otherwise reject the null hypothesis. We have the following large sample tests. Test for single mean, test for two means, test for single proportion, test for two proportions, test for single standard deviation, test for two standard deviation, test for single correlation coefficient, test for two correlation coefficients. Let us see test for a single mean. Let x1, x2, so on, xn be a random sample of size n which is drawn from a population with mean mu and variance sigma square. Then null hypothesis is uh, there is no significant difference between the sample mean and the population mean which is also which can also write as null uh, h naught such that mu equals to mu naught and alternative hypothesis as there is, a no, there is a significant difference between the sample mean and population mean. We can write alternative hypothesis as a H1 such that mu naught equals to mu naught and test statistics z equals to x bar which is sample mean and minus mu naught divided by sigma by root n which follows standard normal distribution. If uh, a sigma is not known here, we can estimate sigma by using sm sample standard error as sigma hat equals to s. Therefore, z equals to x bar minus mu naught by sigma hat divided by square root of n. Here we can substitute sigma hat as small s which also follows standard normal distribution. And finally the conclusion is. Uh, compare, by comparison, comparing this uh, calculated z value with the tabular value of z at alpha percent level of significance, we, if the calculated value of z is less than the tabular value of z, we accept null hypothesis or otherwise we reject that null hypothesis. Test for two means. Let x1, x2, so on be xn be a random sample of size n1 with the population uh, which is drawn from a population with the mean mu1 and variance sigma1 square and another sample y1, y2 so on by n2 be a random sample of size yn be a random sample of size n2 which is drawn from a population with mean mu2 and variance sigma2 square then the null hypothesis is the two population means are equal we can also write h0 such that mu1 equals to mu2 and alternative hypothesis as two population means are not equal. So we can also write as h1 such that mu1 not equals to mu2 coming to the test statistics and h0 z equals to x bar which is first sample mean minus y bar which is second sample mean divided by square root of 
divided by square root of sigma 1 square by n 1 plus sigma 2 square by n 2 which follows standard normal distribution. If, uh, if uh, sigma 1 square equals to sigma 2 square equals to sigma square and which are not known to us, then the sigma square is estimated by sigma square hat equals to n1 s1 square plus n2 s2 square divided by n1 plus n2. After calculating this, comparison and conclusion, uh, compare the calculated value of z with the tabular value of z at a appropriate level of significance. If the calculated value of z is less than the tabular value of z, then we accept the null hypothesis which is the two population means are equal. Otherwise, we reject that the null hypothesis which means uh, uh, we are accepting alternative hypothesis. Test for single proportion. Generally, the test for single proportion is based on normal distribution with the size parameter and probability parameter, size pr parameter as n and probability parameter p. For large sample sizes, this will be done appropri uh, approximated by a normal distribution with the mean np and variance npq, we can write np, uh, npq as 1 minus p. And the test statistics is z equals to p hat minus p naught divided by p naught into 1 minus p naught by n which follows standard normal distribution. Coming to the small sample tests, uh, we consider the, that the sample is small when the sample size is less than 30 and we have the following small sample tests. T test for single mean, T test for two means, F test for variances, chi square test for goodness of fit and chi square test for independence of attributes. T test for single mean. Let x1, x2, so on, x n be a random sample of size n which is drawn from a population with mean mu and variance sigma square. Coming to the null hypothesis, we can formulate as there is no significant difference between the sample mean and population mean and also we can write it as h0 such that mu equals to mu0 and alternative hypothesis there is a significant difference between the sample mean and population mean h1 such that mu0 equal to mu0. Coming to the test statistic under h0 t equals to x minus mu0 divided by s divided, divided by s divided by square root of n minus 1 which follows t with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Compare, coming to the comparison and conclusion, compare the calculated value of t with the tabular value of t at n minus 1 degrees of freedom uh, at, alpha, at, at a particular um, appropriate alpha person level of significance. If the calculated value of t is less than the tabular value of t, we accept null hypothesis, otherwise we reject the null hypothesis. Test for t test for two means. Let the sample, the first sample be x1, x2, so on, xn, uh, which is the size n1, which is drawn from a population with mean mu1 and variance sigma1 square, and y1, y2, yn be another random, uh, be another random sample of size n2, which is also drawn from a population with mean mu2 and variance sigma2 square. Coming to the null hypothesis, the two population means are equal. We can also write it as h0 such that mu1 equals to mu2. Alternative hypothesis which is against to the null hypothesis we can write two population means are not equal. Also write it as h1 such that mu1 not equals to mu2. The test statistic is z equals to x bar minus y bar divided by uh, small s into square root of 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2 which follows n1 plus n2 minus 2 degrees of freedom. Comparison and conclusion. Compare the calculate, above calculated value of uh, z for large values with the tabular value of uh, t at alpha percent level of significance and n1, n1 plus n2 minus 2 degrees of freedom. If the calculated value of t is less than the tabular value of t, then we accept null hypothesis, otherwise we reject the null, null, null hypothesis. F test for variances. Let there are two samples with variances S1 square and S2 square which are drawn from normal populations and having sizes N1 and N2. 
We can formulate the null hypothesis as there is no significant difference between two sample variances. We can write it as H0 such that sigma 1 square equals to sigma 2 square. And alternative hypothesis as there is a significant difference between the two sample variances such that we can write H1 such that H, uh, sigma 1 square not equals to sigma 2 square. Test statistics under H0 F equals to S1 square by S2 square which follows F distribution with N1 minus 1 into N, N2 minus 1 degrees of freedom. Comparison and conclusion. Compare the calculated value of F with the tabular value of F. If the calculated value of F is less than the tabular value of F, we accept the null hypothesis which is the two, there is no significant difference between the two sample variances, otherwise we reject it. Coming to the chi-square test, chi-square test for goodness of fit, this is used to observe how well does the assumed theoretical distributions like binomial, poison or normal fit to the observed data. Coming to the test statistics, chi-square equals to summation. OI which is absorbed values minus EI expectation expected values divided by EI follows chi square distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom and here the comparison and conclusion of this uh, uh, test we compare the calculated value of chi square with the tabular value of chi square again we, we reject if the calculated value is greater than the uh, tabular value of chi square otherwise we accept null hypothesis. I square test for independence of attributes. Consider there are two attributes A and B. Let attribute A is divided into R classes. They are A1, A2 and so on A, A, R. And B is divided into S classes like B1, B2 and so on B, S. The following is a consistency table for R into S the, for the two attributes. We can formulate null hypothesis for this test as attributes A and B are independent and alternative hypothesis as attributes A and B are not independent. Under the null hypothesis of independence of attributes, the values of chi-square for the 2 into 2 contingency table is given by, uh, here uh, let us assume the, here A is a value, B is a value, C is a value and D is a value. We can find here A plus B and C plus D. Uh, here A plus C, B plus D, the N for these all values N equals to A plus B plus C plus D, we can write it as the test statistics as sigma, no, sorry, chi square equals to N into AD minus BC whole square divided by AB plus AC plus BD into B plus D into C plus D, which follows chi square distribution with 2 minus 1 into 2 minus 1 which is equals to 1 degrees of freedom. Thank you.